presumption that determines how much subsidy that you have to pay with Nigerian government funds. Huge sums of money have been spent on subsidy payments. Nigerians don't know how much where we are consuming that, that warrants the payment of such humongous you know, amounts. I know NNPC you know, hardly absent itself from this kind of you know, investigative hearing. And they wrote a letter which is quite commendable. But it's appalling that such letter will come in at this point. And there was no single you know, representative from the company that came to explain why the company cannot do it before submitting the letter. That is not fair. That is not fair. How much more CBN? They pay this money, Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Who else will believe, who, who, who on earth will believe that the Ministry of Petroleum Resources will not be present here and will not send any message? Ministry of Finance. So we want to see this attempt by critical stakeholders to absent themselves from this, this investigative hearing as an attempt to frustrate the effort of the committee. And the, the, the parliament, you know, will not take it lightly. Indeed, that's whom we're speaking with. Honorable Sergio Zogun joins us now. He, is a, he was the one who moved the motion on the floor of the House of Reps to probe uh, the subsidy regime from 2017 to 2021. And also, he's a member of the Ad Hoc Committee and member of the Committee on Petroleum Downstream. You're welcome to Sunrise City this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, we could hear the frustration of Honorable Peter Akpatas in there, uh, who's the deputy a majority leader of the House, and apparently was chairing that committee yesterday, was he? No, I think he came in to represent the Speaker. Okay, to, to open, open yeah, the, uh, yes, the open yeah. event yesterday. But yes. uh, the, for a number of people, this is not the first time that the mm -hmm. House of Representatives has tried to probe a subsidy regime. Mm -hmm. And so for a number of them, they've taken it with skepticism. Why is the House of Reps uh, probing the subsidy regime uh, a few, less than a year to the end of this particular regime when it's been on for a while. Why have you chosen now? How well, we are in the dire straits. I mean, the way things are in the country today, I don't need to even talk about my constituents, I'm talking about myself. Mm. As I sit here and I'm owing a bill of over 600,000 Naira from my last visit home on Dizu. I was watching your news last night. To 11, they took light. I don't have inverter. I had to crawl my way upstairs to go and sleep. So that is me. So we talk about the everyday Nigerian. They are basically eking out a living to survive. How can they have for diesel or even PMS? But beside that, we are paying so much in subsidy. I think the initial budget was to pay about $3 trillion or four trillion, I think it's going to about six trillion now in subsidy alone. So how much is our annual budget? That's close to half of our annual, annual budget. We don't even earn that money. Today, the NPC is taking money from tax oil that should go to FRS, they are borrowing it. Royalty that through DPRO, the net DPRO that should be paid to FAC, they are taking all that. Even money from the JV, JV revenue. Okay, now we have crude oil. This is supposed to be when we should be making big money from crude oil. We are practically using all our earnings in the sale of crude oil to subsidize PMS, just one product. So we should not be talking about this. The program yesterday is even not even the subsidy committee yet. That one is a committee to determine the quantity of fuel that we are consuming, an adult committee. We should be part of the downstream work, downstream committee, that's the standing committee. There's another committee to determine the work, adult committee to determine the work 
that is ongoing with the refinery upgrade or, or, or rehabilitation. And then the subsidy committee is coming on. I'm sure maybe in another one week or two, uh, the speaker will inaugurate that committee. Okay. So, I mean, the very first example which you gave when in your response was mm -hmm. the example of diesel, the uh, back-breaking uh, astronomical rise in the cost of diesel, which has been deregulated for a number of people. We're not paying, di we're not paying any subsidy mm -hmm. on the importation of diesel anymore. Um, and that's the reason why the price has gone up. And of course, there are other uh, variables, you know, surrounding what has happened in the energy markets, which has also affected the price of diesel. But largely, it has been deregulated. So for a number of people, if you say that that's the reason why you are probing uh, what is happening with PMS, uh, if you're wondering what has happened with the astronomical cost, does it not explain if diesel is now uh, even getting out of the reach of those who... Uh, were able to afford it in the past. Doesn't it explain what, what has happened with the subsidy regime on PMS? Uh, it's not as simple as that. Mm. Okay, I think it was in 2022, sorry, 2002, mm -hmm. that um, the government set aside um, 445,000 barrels domestic crude for refining in the country. So as the refineries deteriorated, we started exporting this domestic crude that belongs to the Federation, meant for the refineries. We're now exporting them, exporting it to bring in refined product. In the swap program, right? That was swapped then. Now, I think from later, this present government brought in direct sales, direct purchase, DSDP. So, so trade by butter. We trade the four four five thousand barrels per day for refined products. But that money, that four four five is domestic crude that should go to the Federation. We need to establish today the account that money is paid into. We also need to establish what we are even subsidizing. Our daily import is about 63 million liters of refined products per day. So if NNPC tells us that we are consuming between 75 million to 103 million, something is wrong. Where are we storing it? Do we have storage capacity for that quantity? Even when our daily import is about 63 million, there's a wide gap. The monthly import is about 1.9 billion liters. So should you not ask these questions? We are representing the people. People ask us, what is going on in this country? We can feel it. I can feel it. Like what uh, the, uh, the distinguished sick was talking about just now. The insecurity in the country. This is partially part of what is going on in the country. People can't afford anything. So as representatives of the people, we have to ask questions. So uh, the, the, the committee is coming up at a time like this. Is not late. We need to unravel what is going on. We are not witch hunting anybody. It's not necessarily a probe, but we just need to be told what is going on. Because, like I said, this should be a windfall. But we are practically using all our earnings from crude oil sales to subsidize one product. We are told that the crude oil is supposed to have 21 derivatives. Now, if you give out the 445,000 barrels, what comes from it? I mean, we should even know where the money goes to and all that. It shouldn't be in account of middlemen, you know? So this probe should have started, or rather this committee should have started work like this. Like I said, mm -hmm. we have three adult committees now doing the work of one standing committee. It's not as if the standing committee is not busy. It just shows that we are abreast with the happiness in this country because we represent people. People are also talking to us, our constituents are asking questions. Is it not also, uh, uh, doesn't it raise questions about the effectiveness of the standing committee uh, before now? Because assuming the standing committee were doing its work and it were abreast of the issues, wouldn't it be knowledgeable as to, you know, some of the things that would have, how the NNPC was operating, you know, just what, the, what state the books are in, because NNPC is making a huge show of opening its accounts and trying to be transparent. 
um, wouldn't they have been abreast of what precisely was happening in that sector? Yeah, they are, they are working. It's because it has become an, the trend has become so dangerous that we don't want to leave it to the committee alone. So it's like an emergency. Okay, other committee come in and bring this report within two weeks. Now, if we leave it to the standing committee, you might see how to go through the rituals of basically doing the same thing. Now, I'll let you know that some, I think some three months ago, we invited the, the GMD of NNPC, and we asked questions, your camera people were there, mm -hmm. about what is happening with the crude oil theft and all of that. It showed us clips. You have the, the military, you have the Air Force, you have the Navy, and we are still asking, okay, with all, they even have the NNPC uh, security contractors. Because they showed us a clip when the NNPC security contractors were coming in a, in a vessel, and then the young guys ran away, some jumped into water. There was a huge boat with jerrycans inside. And I don't think those guys are the ones really stealing our oil. I'm sure there's more that meets the eyes. Because I think big vessels are coming in and taking this crude oil away. You know, okay, well... What he told us then is that they have put measures in place that within two months, some of that will come down, then we will have record increased production of crude oil. And I remember that day, my contribution was, well, chairman, maybe we can allow him, we can let him slide. Two months, like my mother used to tell me, put your head on the pillow, you open your eyes, it will be two months. But it's been three months now. It's not, the production is not going up. If anything, is going down. So why, just to let, that was the work of the standing committee. So if, because so many motions are coming in this light, the speaker is compared to honor it, to say, okay, fine, let's even set up the other committee just in case the standing committee is overwhelmed or they are not doing enough. You know? So it's because it's such a critical issue that should be discussed now. It's, if we're not even discussing these issues, Nigerians should be asking us, what, what are you guys doing there? You have to make laws for those that are living, not the dead. Okay, um, I am just a little curious. To what end? If you, I mean, we're hoping that this probe will start or this questioning mm. will start because you've said, well, it's not exactly a probe. It's just, you know, to, to find out yeah. just what the processes are. But, I mean, it's still a probe anyway. When you ask questions, you're probing. Uh, but the question, the main question for a number of Nigerians who also watched what happened in 2012, uh, stroke 2013, when there was also a subsidy probe by the House of Representatives and even the Senate committee, I mean, the Senate as well. Mm. I think that of the Senate was even before the House, but that of the House was more dramatic because people watched for months on, on television just how the House of Reps was pro probing and the information that came out of it was unprecedented. But the question is, to what end? Because as far as we know, very little, if anything at all, came out of that probe. Well, uh, we have three arms of government. Indeed. It's for the parliament to investigate and submit the report to the executive. So the good thing about this, I think we should actually applaud the parliament that we are doing something like this. Because at, we, in the process, your cameraman will be there like, other media houses, you hear what we are saying. What are we even advise the media houses to do, because your team will usually attend all the sessions, is to bring in, maybe whenever we are sitting, thereafter bring in petro economists and petrophysicists and all of them to review what we are doing. So that in that way, you can preempt our report. The report is not going to be sent to the media house, it's going to be sent to the executive. So months after, if nothing is happening, you can begin to ask questions based on the knowledge gained, you know. So I think whenever there is, uh, whenever we are probing things like this, whenever we are asking questions like this and we're sending a report, something comes out. Is, but the question would be, what would the executive do with it? Mm. Let, me, let me flip this conversation to Lagos now, gentlemen. Thank you, Mark. Well, uh, Honorable... The natural question that first of all comes to my mind, you know, as I listen to you is, are you in any way validating the general opinion that so many people have made and are still making that the subsidy thing is a ruse? Well, 
Well, I would not say that. I would not. I would not tow that that route. I would not. I. I believe there is subsidy, <laughs> because if there is no subsidy, the president, this present president, initially, if you remember, some years ago, before he was elected, said that who is subsidizing who, and then we were not even paying anything close to a trillion a year. So today we are most likely going to be doing six trillion, if not more. And he's the president. So, yes, there is subsidy. But we need to know. You see, nobody in the world subscribes or supports monopoly. As it stands today, I guess because of the dollars, NNPC is one importing. They are the ones giving the contract with the DSDP, direct sales, direct purchase. They are the ones um, um, distributing and if it's touring. So that is why we need to ask questions. What is the landing cost? What is the cost of you know, distributing this product? What's the cost of, the cost of storage? The NNPC doesn't have enough facilities to store. So they have a throughput contract whereby they give this product to uh, tank farm owners. OK, so what is being moved from these tank farms to the various depots and to the various uh, stations. So these questions must be asked. And like I said, it's not done in an executive session. Everybody will be there to take these questions home and analyze. So that if we are any delays submitting our report, you can begin to ask questions to say, OK, what's the outcome of um, the investigation? So yes, I believe we are subsidizing products. But to what term? Hmm. Six trillion in a year? What is our annual budget? You know? And fine. If we are, what is our if annual revenue? We're going to use all that money to subsidize just one product. So I, I strongly believe we are subsidizing, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to preempt the work of the committee that we are spending that much. I don't even like the committee that is ongoing right now that was uh, inaugurated yesterday. We need to know first what we are importing, what quantity we are importing, what quantity we are consuming. Then if it becomes the problem of the security to check what is going to our, the neighboring countries, that can be determined. Hmm. You know, then maybe we cannot take, push this responsibility to the squarely to the doorstep of the security agents. Perhaps so another, yeah. Perhaps another question that, that's natural, you know, if you agree that there is subsidy one way or the other, at what point, from information available to you, does this subsidy kick in? I mean, from some of the revelation that has been put out from the House of Representatives exactly, at what point does this subsidy kick in? And who are the people that have questions to answer to you? Well, we, that is why we want to determine, now we are doing trade by butter. 445,000 barrels of crude oil every day. It's not part of the OPEC quota. It's the domestic crude. When that is sold, for how much? Which account does that go to? So when you are bringing in the refinished product, at what cost is it? What is the landing cost? So these are things we will determine to let us arrive at what we, who is paying who and what are we really paying out? Like I said earlier, what quantity? If you say we are consuming between 75 million to 103 million liters per day, but from your record, right, this is NHPC record to fact, your daily import is about 63 million liters. So where are you storing it? Do we have capacity to store over 100 and something million liters per day? So where's the extra going to? So these are, these are questions that we will ask and will help us unravel what is going on. Yeah. Well, Honorable, what, a number of people would also be asking how complex or how simple the energy sector, particularly the sector, the midstream and downstream, they are talking about how complex or not is it such that uh, it would look like 
something that is just supposed to be a simple process is so convoluted, so, so consuming to many people? Is it a complex system that makes it difficult for us to know, you know how simple these processes are? Uh, it's not complex. I, I just think as Nigerians, we haven't done the right thing. We are not asking the right questions. You know, like now you ask me, why did you, why would you even bother to do this at all? You know, but we have to put the feet of these gentlemen, women in the regulatory bodies, the agency, or okay, no, NHPC no longer a corporation now, is a, a company. We have to task them to let us know what is going on. As it stands today, if our refineries were working, we would I be cleaning out today? Probably be supplying refined products to our neighbors. We had the gas master plan, we just on paper. Probably would I be supplying gas to Europe today as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But Reverse is the case today. Rather than making money big time like the Saudis, the Qataris, and uh, the Iranians, we are borrowing to bring in this product. But when we should have been supplying the rest of the world? So it's not a complex situation at all, but as Nigerians, we have made it complex because we are not asking the right questions. And for a long time, we have all maybe just be quiet about some of these things. If you remember, I think it was in 2015, before Jonathan left, they reduced the price of petroleum products. I think it was about 80 something naira per liter. Then why? Because the petroleum, the price of crude oil was dropping in the international market. That was when it was going to come to about $60 per barrel. So what that meant was we're not spending too much on crude oil to refine. So naturally it means that the finished product is now cheaper. So it became 80 something naira per liter, 86 or so, or 87. Then this administration came in, fell further, maybe by 2016. You know, if you remember some of them, some of the ministers in this administration will tell you that they couldn't do much because the product of crude oil fell to about maybe even $30 per barrel. Okay, so that naturally will translate to cheaper refined products. I also can remember Dr. Kachoku, then the Minister of State Petroleum, had also said that we are removing subsidy from PMS. You know? Then later he came back and said that he is now under recovery. So I think the government is not being, if not being honest to Nigerians. And we also allow them to get away with too many things. That's when, if they were really honest, we should have deregulated. I'm sure we would have been buying petrol for, for, for about 30 naira per liter then. So Nigerians will know clearly that the government doesn't have anything to do with this. So you have private individuals bringing these products. You still have the regulatory bodies to check what is brought in to, meet, to be sure that it meets the specification required here. If I might digress a bit, we are using the dirtiest PMS in the whole world here. We export sweet crude, which is low in sulfur. We bring in refined product that's very high in sulfur, which is very toxic. So if we are started asking these questions earlier, we would not have gotten here. When you claim that the price of crude oil had dropped, that should have affected refined product that we are importing. You did not deregulate. You even claimed that NPC was making profit. So right now that the prices have gone up, you have also come back to tell us that you are spending so much of the money we are making from the sales of crude oil to subsidize the refined products. How did our refineries get to where they are now? It's not rocket science. You know, I guess a whole lot was happening in this era of subsidy and then no attention was paid to the refineries. We're not talking about Dangote refinery coming on stream. We had initially we heard it's gonna be first quarter this year. Now we are hearing it's going to be last quarter this year. Even if it comes on string, it's not going to be immediate because it's a brand new refinery. So maybe they will be doing something like 10% to 20 to 30. Before it gets to 100%, it might be sometime next year or maybe who knows, in two years' time. So I think there's nothing complex about the operation of the industry. You know, it's a peculiar industry, but it's not complex. But we didn't do what we needed to do. We are not asking questions. 
You know, and I don't even think we're asking enough questions right now. Overture to you, uh, to the House of Representatives, about why the people who are invited, the NNPC, the Finance Ministry and all, why they didn't uh, show up. Because there are those who will be wondering, maybe they didn't show up because they wanted to do something to, so that they can put up a good front to the House of Representatives. Well, I, usually you give me more of two weeks where you are inviting any of these agencies. I think it's just the immunity these days. Is immunity, sorry, um, what's the word? They have become an authority unto themselves, you know? When you invite some of these agencies, it takes forever for them to respond. Impunity. impunity, thank you very much. You see? It just takes forever for them to respond. And then that drags the work of a committee that is supposed to be for two weeks or three weeks. You know, the committees are now, okay, now you set up ad hoc committee because you want a quick resolution to the issues. So rather than respond immediately to you, they will tell you initially that, ah, oh, well, the CEO is not around, the executive secretary has traveled. Or, Come on, give me a break. You have people working with you. You have, this is an agency, there's institutional memory. You have records. Now, I saw one of the chief executive, I think it was uh, last week, and he was telling me that he has more than 10 committees to attend to. So if we are saying basically the same thing, so you, have, you already have a template to respond to us. I once worked in the private sector, in the private sector. When we are doing BD, I had young people working with me. That was once I was in Port Harcourt, they were in Worry. And I came back, I saw them in cover all. They did a tender all through the day, and then all through the night, and I felt very bad. And I told them thereafter, you know what, because you guys are very young, and maybe you don't have too much experience in what we are doing. If we are doing these basic tenders almost every other week or month, we should have data to pull from. Yes, granted all the companies are not asking for the same thing, but you just edit, take out what this company is not asking for. So if you have that in the flash, where well, we didn't have flash then, if you have that in the diskette or something, so you take out what is required for this particular tender and bang, you go. One of them felt offended, but years later he came back to appreciate me for what I said. So when the agencies make it look as if it's rocket science to produce documents, you claim you are processing payment every day for the FRS, for the CBN, for Ministry of Finance. You cannot be paying money that belongs to Nigerians. Trillions. And we're asking you to come and account for it. You say you need time to prepare. Two weeks will not be enough for you to prepare. We are not asking the minister to do that. You have tons of people working for you that are being paid from taxpayers' money. So I think it's just impunity, and I think the president really needs to rein in on, on these people. You know. Well, again, for the, for the NNPC, there, there's, um, there's a summit going on, an oil and gas event going on. Indeed. Uh, so the GMD, I'm sure, was there yesterday with his um, top men. You know? So why saying this? Maybe I should just um, condole the families of uh, uh, Barkindo and then the NNPC family. So we can understand why the NNPC were not there, but they still could have sent somebody. I don't think it's the entire NNPC that went there. But it's not just for the NNPC. Like you mentioned, Ministry of Finance was, were not there. And FRS, then even at the Accountant General's office. I think the president should, maybe should warn them or should do something about that. Well, we certainly will keep tabs and see just how they respond, whether or not they will eventually show up. We hope they do because there are plenty of questions to ask. Now, what eventually, when that probe goes on, what uh, is eventually done with it and how the House uh, puts it together, uh, we'll wait to see. But we have to thank you very much uh, for coming on this morning. Honorable Sergio Sogun was the one who moved the motion on the floor of the House of Representatives and is a member of the Ad Hoc and Standing Committee on Petroleum Downstream. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me.